and very, very big right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one of, one of the strongest hurricanes to ever make landfall in that in that part of the Bahamas ever. And you know the the data that those aircraft get are just you know, so, so, so useful, not only with intensity forecasting, with the track too. And we'll talk a lot about the wind speed with this one, because this is really where a lot of the intensity comes from. You can see the radar behind us centered right over uh, near just east of that Freeport area of the Bahamas at this point. It is a very impressive circulation at this early hour of the morning. And the wind field right now in the upper atmosphere is coming in with 179 mile per hour winds. We have seen surface winds over 100 miles per hour and of course the general circulation holding on to about 165 mile per hour winds. There you have it. The eye of the storm just west of Sweden K in the Bahamas, just east of Freeport. Freeport wind, one of the heaviest and strongest bands of wind, rain and thunderstorm activity in these early morning hours and the circulation really just incredibly impressive. You can see some of these early outer bands now making their way onto that Florida coastline, though of course not holding on to a lot of rain there just yet. Uh, that's still to come throughout the day today and into the night tonight. Dorian currently a category five storm. It has been now category five uh, since uh, well, let's say Saturday, I believe, and we continue it with a very, very slow westward motion one mile per hour to the west. So it is just slamming those Bahamas islands consistently. And the track now shows that between today and late tonight, we should start to see that northward turn possibly dropping down to category four strength as it moves along the Florida coastline and then a category three from about the Orlando region all the way up through the Georgia beaches before making a turn toward the Carolinas. Now late Tuesday into Wednesday is when we'll start to feel some of the impacts throughout the Charleston area. Slow weakening is expected, but look how close it gets to that coastline. Our beaches are very likely to see some strong surge, some beach erosion and enough rainfall to cause some significant flooding before the storm starts to peel off into the northern Atlantic off the coasts of Virginia uh, and then ev eventually Maryland into the New Jersey region, but farther out to sea at that point and quite a bit weaker. So much less of a concern for those places than what we'll have here in the southeast. The Carolinas coastline right now is showing onset of some scattered rain and thunderstorms near the Wilmington region. Uh, not much for our coast so far. And as we take a wider look, you'll be able to see quite a bit of activity off the coast of Florida, but the heaviest rain, Isaac, still a bit far away. Absolutely, and we're going to continue to see that get closer and closer to the Florida coastline over the course of the next couple of days. Here's Futurecast at 7 a.m., and this particular model has the system a little bit farther offshore. One way or another, it is going to be, I expect, a little bit closer to the east Florida coastline. Wednesday morning, you can see it's got its sights set on the Carolinas, but that turn is expected to happen, and no direct landfall is expected. But Wednesday, certainly the conditions going downhill into Wednesday night. This is 7 p.m. and then Wednesday night at 11 p.m. Certainly very heavy rain and wind likely from Charleston northeastward along the coast up to Myrtle Beach. The Grand Strand included there and then Wilmington. You'll start to see some of that activity uh, late Wednesday and really into Thursday as well. So again, as we look at our impacts, the immediate coastal areas is what we're most concerned with to see tropical storm and or hurricane force winds and three to six inches of rain. As we slide toward I-95 from Ridgeland up to Florence, we could have some tropical storm force gust possible, lower rain totals, two to four inches, maybe some minor flooding there. And once you get into the Midlands and upstate, we are going to be basically impact free outside of some extra clouds and a little breeziness at times. Out the door this morning, it is a cool 59 in Hendersonville, 62 in Asheville, mostly in the 60s for the upstate downtown Greenville at 71. The sky nice and clear, and we will keep it that way for much of the day, much like the previous few days. We will see some cloudiness here and there, but predominantly speaking, we're having sunshine today. 88 degrees though, so slightly warmer than average for this time of the year. First couple days of September, 20% chance of a shower in the mountains. Most of you stay dry as well. For the fifth day in a row, your Carolina sky meter looking great. It is another perfect 10. See, no reason to not spend your holiday outdoors if you can. Seven day forecast outside of a random couple showers and some extra clouds on Wednesday and Thursday. That's all we're going to see here in the upstate. Looking great and feeling not bad. The weekend, next weekend, I should say, dry on Saturday. A couple showers become possible by Sunday. It's 519, Chris. I know the lane reversal is happening on the coast later today. You're also watching local traffic.